Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Vicky. We had done till the last classes. What we have done, we have done um, bend tendons with parabolic profile. Bend tendons with parabolic profile. Did we solve or sum on that problem on that? Yes. Okay. That means we had uh, solved the problem on this also. Uh, the parabolic profile. Let me share my screen. I don't know if parabolic profile is done. We have done load balancing method. Load balancing method. Yes. Yes, no, Shimti, no, Golombaya, yes, yes, no, yes, no, so many, yes, no, but uh, have I done or not yet? Let me show you. So, out. This one, load balancing method. No, no. This introduced us to the topic. Okay, we have not solved a problem that means on this, right? Load balancing. Okay, then we shall take this question first question here now. Um, what the question says is that determine the profile. This is a load balancing question, a uh, load balancing method. Okay, and we have done how many methods till now? We have done the stress concept method. Uh, and now we are doing the load balancing method. Load balancing method we had done on all the band tendons, the band tendons with a triangular profile, band tendons with parabolic profile, yes or no. So these were nothing but the load balancing method. This was a kind of load balancing method. And also sometimes when we want to neutralize completely our uh, loads that is the suppose downward load if you 
I, I think I have discussed with you these things that if we want to uh, if we want to neutralize completely the downward load with the upward load then what we have to do we have to know how much dip we have to provide how much this dip we have to provide because to neutralize this two you have to do what you have to equate this two we'll think we'll assume it to be equal the upward load and the downward load suppose if this is a downward load and the upward load in a parabolic profile was how much hph by s square here you see so that is nothing but so uh, that means what when we are load uh, trying to balance a load and we are completely trying to neutralize the uh, loads then we equate these two upward and the downward loads and to neutralize when you want to neutralize some loads you have to design that load accordingly that means this dip how much you are going to give or the uh, pre-stressing force how much you have to give such that these two loads are equal so let us take this question if we see this question determine the profile of a load balancing load balancing cable for a beam of span 6 meter carrying an all inclusive load of 40 kN per meter this one the pre stressing force in the tendon is 1200 kN so the pre stressing force is 1200 kN Twelve hundred kilonewton. Now the beam section is four hundred into six hundred. Beam section is given to us. This is four hundred. We know. Also, we have this is to be six hundred. So now, what is our question? We have to determine the profile of the load balancing cable. That means profile of the load balancing cable means what? What is the profile of this? This is a parabolic profile, and how? And how we will know that it is a parabolic profile or not? Because by the this dip, okay. By this dip also you will know because uh, the profile how you are going to know. If this dip is 10 m, uh, 100 mm, it will be here. If it is 50 mm, it will be here. So the profile will be designed according to this dip. If we know the dip, this is the profile. So determine the profile of a load balancing cable for a beam of this much, this much, much. Okay. So now when we have to, we are doing now the load balancing method and we have to, no, we have, we are asked to find out the profile of the load balancing method. That means to find the profile, you have to find the H value. That means this dip, when you know the dip, you will get a profile. If it is 150, it is going to be like this at the bottom. So to find out this now, we have to assume that uh, this downward load, 40 kN per meter is equal to your upward load which your this is giving this uh, parabolic profile is giving and that is given by how much 8 ph by s square so if this is 8 ph by s square that we have to equate it with this such that we will assume this two are equal so we are equating this two see here you can see 8 ph which is your upward force is equal to your is equal to first of all we have calculated and we have we know our pre-stressing force we don't know our age we know our l l is six meter so that means this is our eight value of eight ph by l square now in order to in order this upward pressure may fully balance the external load we will equate this to which is your upward load is equal to your this downward load 40 kilonewton this one and this one is equalized so here once we equate this two we can easily calculate our h value this one so ultimately we got the profile to be 150 mm okay so that means this h is your equal to 150 mm okay so then this was our question that we had to calculate the we have to find out the profile of the this particular cable this here so profile how you can find out to find the profile or to sometimes it may be like this that this dip is given to you that is the h is given to you but you will be uh, you may be asked like 
find out the pre-stressing force such that your these two loads are equal the upward load and the downward load are equal so in that case again you are going to equate in the parabolic profile you are going to equate this two and then you can easily find out your p value from this 8 ph by s square h you will already know so in that uh, in this way load balancing method what we do we try to neutralize and we try to equate this two we equate and then after equating we find we can find out that to equate this to how much of uh, this dip you can provide or how much of uh, pre-stressing force you can provide. Okay, so this was the question. Understood? Is it clear? Okay. And then what is this? The stress we have to find out. We can you can also calculate the stress after knowing the dip. Now you can find out the stress which is here. In this case, the stress will be P by A. Okay, the uniform stress is P by A, which is the direct stress. And it is compressive in nature. You can also calculate if it is asked, if it is not asked, you if you do not calculate, then also it is okay. 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 Is it okay or not? If it didn't. Okay. Okay. I can see your chat. Okay, then we can take another question on this. Suppose this now, I'll just show and explain you. Okay, so suppose this is now your uh, para, uh this one is a triangular parabolic profile. Sorry, uh, triangular profile. Okay, that was what this was a parabolic profile. And now, if your tendon is uh, a triangular, having a triangular profile, you know, uh, and uh, what will be your dip. How you can calculate you assume you have to same concept you have to equate this to the downward load and the upward load and you know what is your upward load in the triangular triangular profile tendons this upward load 2p sine theta you already know that we have done uh, problems on this too 2p sine theta 2p sine theta so uh, if the what does the question says if the pre-stressing force in the tendon is p this one is p here for the beam section in figure this 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 find the central dip uh, h required to fully balance the concentrated load w applied at the mid span so similar to the previous question you have here also you have to calculate the dip but the only difference in this is that this is a triangular profile tendon and which will have an upward pressure of how much upward thrust of 2p sin theta so you know how to find out the 2p sin theta because since theta is very very small so we can calculate it by 2p 10 theta and what is your 10 theta we know from this file we know what is our 10 theta this h by your this which is l by 2 because your, uh, this uh, total span of the beam is l so this is half of the l l by 2 so you will get 4pH by L. That is your upward thrust. 4pH by L. Now once we equate this to 4pH by L with this W downward load, we can easily find out our H. We have equated this to the upward load and the downward load. And we, we know already the pre-stressing force we know. We know the L, the length of the beam we know. So we can easily calculate our dip. Okay. So, our dip must be 4 WL by 4P for this to be this to count, counterbalance this. Okay. Find this where is simple. In load balancing method, what we do generally, we try to counterbalance the downward load with the upward load. So, uh, in those kind of questions, in load balancing questions, 
we always have an upward trust which is trying to counter always an upward trust in band tendons whether it be parabolic or whether it be triangular profile so that they are giving a they are trying to counterbalance the upward loads so here when you are when you are asked to find out the uh, pre stressing force or the dip you can equate this to okay and you can find out your required terms or the values you can say so if another question we do okay now try to solve this question find the cable dip h for the beam shown in this figure here so that the applied external loads may be balanced okay the tension in the cable is p the tension in the cable is p so try to solve this and uh, Give me the answer of what is your dip of the cable H value. Everyone try. Already I have discussed with you these two similar questions. And now try to solve this question with the same method. Try till then I am going to take your attendance. Till you solve the question I will be taking your attendance. Tell me the answer. What is your dip? Uh, enrollment one present ma'am uh, two four uh, five six present ma'am six six okay seven eight nine yes miss present nine eight nine, present eight okay Please tell eight if you need. Okay, nine, ten, if you have ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Present, ma'am. Zero, one, two. One, two. Present, ma'am. Okay, okay, twelve present. Fourteen. Fourteen present, ma'am. Okay. Fifteen. Seventeen. Fifteen present, ma'am. Fifteen. 17 15 present yes 17 17 ma'am run before present run before present uh 17 17 18 19 present ma'am 18 19 present ma'am 18 18 present 19 20 20 I am 24 present. Present 25. 26. 27. 30. 31. 30. 30. 30. 30. 31. 31 present, man. 32. 32. 32 present ma'am 34 present miss 34 present, present. miss 34. Okay. 36 36 36 37 
present ma'am. Thirty-eight. Present ma'am. Present miss. Thirty-eight. Yes ma'am. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. Forty-two. 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 Present ma'am. Forty-three. Forty-five. 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 Present. Forty-six. Thank you, forty-six. Forty-six. Okay, forty-six. Forty-six. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. Present, ma'am. Forty-eight. Forty-nine. Okay, it. Then we have okay. Fifty. Present miss. Fifty. Fifty-one. Fifty-one. Fifty-two. Fifty-four. Fifty-five. Fifty-four. Fifty-five. Fifty-six. Fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, okay, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty, sixty-one, sixty-three, and ninety-nine. Hundred okay, ninety nine present. Hundred one, hundred one, four, six, one, six, hundred eight, hundred eight, one zero nine, one zero nine present, ma'am, one zero eight present, ma'am. Uh, one, one. Zero, zero, four, one zero nine present, ma'am. Zero zero four. Seven. All right now. One hundred eleven. Twelve thirteen fourteen. Present, ma'am. Hundred eleven. Hundred forty. Hundred and forty. Present ma'am one hundred thirteen. One one eight present ma'am. Uh, one twenty four. One twenty present ma'am. One twenty four present ma'am. One thirty two. One thirty four. One thirty three present. One thirty four. One thirty four present, ma'am. One thirty four present. One thirty four present. One thirty six. One thirty six present, ma'am. Forty four. Forty five. One forty three. One forty three present, ma'am. One forty five, one forty eight, one forty nine, one fifty, one fifty one. Fifty one. Okay. Then. Everybody is present. I'll uh, share the absentees enrollment in the group. Please tell if you are missed out. Okay, how much is your answer now here? The question.
How much did you get this H dip? WL by 60. Sol Solomon Taki, WL by 6P. Nanzia, WL by 6P. Same. W everybody got WL by 6P. Okay. Any other answers? WL by 6P. Everybody WL by 6P. Pallav Taluda WL by 6P. Tess G. Momming. Everybody WL by 6P. Bimal Rongpi WL by 6P. Bomna WL by 6P. Any other answers? हाँ तो एग्जाम दे दो हाँ ठीक है ओके हाँ अदर आंसर्स ऑल डब्ल्यूएल बाय सिक्स पी मैं घूमे घूमे बट हाउ इट इस डब्ल्यूएल बाय सिक्स पी ऑल डब्ल्यूएल बाय सिक्स पी सिक्स पी सिक्स पी सिक्स पी सिक्स पी Hmm. Let me show you the solution. Then we well, yeah, we have to since these are equal, right? This W this W is equal. The downward load is equal. If we go through the center at the mid span, and if we see from here, this part is also equal. This part is also so. We have to find out this dip. So we can consider this portion. Oh. This portion we can consider. Oh. Yeah, Shimti, WL by 3P. It's WL by 3P. Because when we are considering this, so when we consider this, we will get the value of this H. And what is the value of this H? It will be same for this also. So that's why we can consider this portion only. So what it will be? Now, we have to find out what this is a point load. So here one upward force will be there. Upward thrust will be there. Yes or no? So that will be equal to your this. And for finding out the sine theta or tan theta, you have this one h by l by 3. This one l by 3. This h divided by your this l by 3. So you will get how much? If you see the solution, you see here tan theta, you got how much? 3h by l now. Tan theta is your this h divided by your l by 3. So, it comes to be 10 theta to be how much? 3H by L. So, now you can equate this with your this because above this, that is the upward load, above this upward thrust, there is a downward load of this W. So, we can, this is going to try to compensate these values. So, we can equate these two. 3H by L is equal to W. Yes or no? So, P sine theta is equal to W. So, from here, the sin theta, we already got 3h by L. Just now we calculated. So, 3h by L. Now, from here, you can find out easily your h value. So, h is your WL by 3p. Okay. Since we are considering only this portion, so from here, only one uh, p sin theta is going to come. I think you people have taken maybe 2p sin theta. But it will be single because from this side, it is not at the center. 
half part is acting from this side it is coming here p sin theta and from this side one p sin theta okay and then only this can be equal this side one this side one for this one for this one okay so we got our w or oh sorry h to be wl by 3 p fine so now if we go now next we will try to find out what is our pressure line method okay now the third method which we are going to solve which we are going to understand is your pressure line method this is also called as your p line method p line method or it is also called to be c line method or it is also known as to be the strength in that method. Okay, this is also known as to be your strength in that method or the P line method, or the C line method or the pressure line method. Okay. So in this method, uh, we had done stress concern method, load balancing method. Now, the third method to find out or calculate all the stresses developed in a P-stressed concrete member, we can find out the, we have another one, which is a pressure line method. Okay. Out, out. I already gave you wiki the attendance i saw you attending okay the now we are going to go with the pressure line method now what is your pressure line method what does that mean so you see here this is your pressure line method that means if we consider this beam of length suppose uh, l which is provided with uh, this tendon you see here this tendon provided with this tendon with an eccentricity with the cg to be e if we suppose that this beam is lying on the ground, that is the beam is not subjected to any external load, hence there will be no external, this bending moments on the beam because they don't have any external uh, loads here. Okay. So that means there will be no bending moment. So in that case, what we do, we recognize the existence of the following forces, which is the P force and the c force now what is your p force and what is your c force uh, see here this is the tendon when we give a uh, tension to the tendon once we give tension to the tendons then only you will have your uh, pre-stressing forces developed now this pull which is your p is what your p okay this is the tendon line and the tendon line is nothing but is known as the p line Okay, this tendon line is known wherever your tendon is placed, that line is known as your P line. And now what is C line? C line is nothing but the forces due to this tension of the uh, tendon. When you pull this tension tendons, then you release them. What happens? There are compressive forces. These forces will be developed. So somewhere uh, there will be a line of uh, com compression okay so that is known as your c line now what happens this is the center of your beam c uh, sorry cg now this is a tendon below the cg so there is an eccentricity now but what happens in the external in the absence of any external loading or bending moments what happens? the c line and the p line are coinciding with each other that means with the c line you will have also with the p line you will also have the c line that means the compression line is also here acting together okay but the law okay here you can see the line of action of the p force is called the p line as i already mentioned you the p line is nothing but the tendon line itself this also i told you the line of action of the c force is called the c line or the pressure line this c line is also known as your that means where the compression is acting is also known as your c line or the pressure line method and that's why your method is known as either pressure line method or the c line method or you can say a p line method okay hence in the absence of any external bending moment the p line and the c line coincides 
Okay. So when there is no external loading or the uh, there is no external loading, there will be no moment. So there will be no eccentricity. So that means your P line will be coinciding with the C line. Okay. But when you have a load, suppose this is a load here. Suppose here is a load. Here you have a load of the beam. Then there will be a moment in this way. This is your moment developed due to that load. Now, this is your P. This is your P, that is a tendon. The tendon is placed here. This is your tendon. So, what happens as soon as the load acts and the moment is developed, as soon as this moment is developed, what happens? Your this P line before the load was applied what happened your this P line and your this C line which is the compression line was coinciding you can see here there was no load so P line and C line was overlapped to each other that means they are coinciding to each other okay but as soon as there is a moment developed what happens your C line gets shifted from your this P line at a distance of suppose here like it is shown in the figure is at a distance of a okay which means this c line will have an eccentricity with the cg that this is the cg of the that means the central line of the beam now your cg your c line will have an eccentricity with the cg and in the strength concept method this pressure line method or you can say c line p line or the strength concept method what happens we always consider this c line method uh, sorry the c line we don't consider the P line. Earlier, what happened in pre stressing forces, what you used to do? In the, uh, sorry, stress concern method, what you used to do? Let me come and sit here. It's noisy there. Now, in the, uh, what happened in the stress concern method, what happened? We used to do what? We used to find out the stresses. Okay, we used to find out the stresses with respect to our tendon line. That means uh, the tendon was at an eccentricity of how much that will give us our uh, stress due to the moment developed, eccentric moment. That means the stress due to the direct stress due to this pre stressing force, the stress due to any load that was developed, this bending moment, the stress due to the bending moment of the dead load or life load, and the stress due to eccentricity was there. And we used to consider this tendon line, which if that had an eccentricity. But now, in the strength concept method or the pressure line method, we will be considering our importance is this C line. Okay, we are not going to consider this tendon line, but we are going to consider the C line. That means the stresses with respect to this C line we are going to consider. Now, if we see this particular uh, figure here with the moment lo load and due to that load, if there is a moment M here, then what will happen? Earlier, before the load acted, your P line and C line were coinciding. But now, as soon as this moment developed, this you see here, the C line, the compression line has shifted from the P line, this distance with, an, with the distance of A. Right, so now what are the stresses that will be developed in this particular figure? There will be a stress due to the this one. C now, C is nothing but P because P is what? P is the pre stressing force. Once you give pull to the tendons, it will give a pre stressing force. This one, P, and P is nothing but the compression force, which is your this C force. Okay, so C is nothing but P, C is equal to your P. Okay, that means the pre-stressing force C. So now uh, the direct stress which will be uniform throughout the beam will be how much? This C by A? Yes or no? C by A. Okay. Okay, so what happens here? C by A is a direct stress which is developed here. Now, uh, what will be the other stress which is developed? That will be plus minus your, uh, th this has an eccentricity now because I said you, I told you that we are going to consider the C line with respect to our CG, uh, P line 
there is no need of considering this tendon line but in this trend concern method here we'll always consider the c line so now c line has an eccentricity with the cg of the beam that means there is an eccentric moment developed here so that and this eccentric moment is the effect of this will give us the uh, effect of the due to this load whatever moment is developed this moment will be shown in this manner okay which is the ascent with the eccentricity so that will be how much pe by z earlier we used to say so now it will be c e c e by z okay so there is no extra moment due to this eccentricity because the moment due to this dead load which is developed is shown by this eccentric compression line according to our this methods the strain concern method or you can see the p line method or the c line method okay and one more thing i forgot to tell you mean this uh, shift of the c line from the p line this distance that how much it has shifted you have to know that value this a you have to know so how you get this a value is that the distance that means the shift of the c line from the p line is given by m by p okay to find out how much your c line has shifted after the moment has developed how much your c line has shifted from the p line is given by m by p m is nothing but the moment okay and the p is the pre stressing force so you will know these values once you know the loads you will know the moment and the pre stressing force so by dividing moment by the pre stressing force you can calculate your shift that means the a value a is equal to